In this video, we'll discuss could I benefit from a friendship organization. All too often, we end up in friendships that cause us more problems than happiness. Most people will recognize the scenario of a so-called friend who only seems to be interested in their own problems, who always seems to be asking you for help, but then never seems to be around when you need their assistance in return. Many people are extremely aware of having a friend who only ever seems to come around when they want something or when they want to complain and whine. If you have a friend who brings you down rather than lifts you up, it's possible that you could benefit from some friendship organization. Could some of your friendships be causing your problems? Cluttered friendships are one final facet of a cluttered life that can lead to a disorganized mind and poor mental well-being. If you constantly feel as if you're having to put someone else first without that person having the same approach to you, you're probably in a toxic friendship. It's human nature to try to cling on to the friendships that we've formed, but sometimes those friendships simply aren't worth saving. When a friendship brings you misery and not happiness, it's time to consider letting it go in order to declutter your life and boost your mental health. What is a toxic friendship? How do you recognize if you're in a toxic friendship? It can be hard to spot a toxic friend. It's possible that they were once a best friend who was kind and helpful towards you in the past. It can be difficult to see how a relationship like that can deteriorate over time. And so you might overlook the telltale signs of a toxicity for a long time. Often, jealousy is the root cause of a toxic friendship. Perhaps you got a better paid job, found a new partner, started a family, or lost weight. Your friend may find it hard to cope with their own feelings of inadequacy and may begin to put you down, treat you badly, or even blank you. Label your friendships for clarity. Labeling your friendships will bring you more clarity in your life. You can divide your friendships into two groups, drains or radiators. Does your friend bring warmth into your life and make you feel happy and good about yourself? If they do, that's great. They're a radiator. However, if they drain all the love, positivity, strength, and happiness from your life, it's a toxic friendship, and your so-called friend is a drain. Once you know which of your friends are drains, you can take action. You may be able to cut your toxic friend completely out of your life. If they are someone you only saw irregularly anyway, you can just stop texting, calling, and arranging meetups. You can delete them from your social media. Yes, you'll probably feel awkward and guilty, but it's for your own good. On the other hand, if it's someone that you're still going to see regularly, you may need to take a different course of action. You can hide them on social media, so you aren't subjected to their negativity on a daily basis. Unfollowing someone means that they won't be aware that you can't see their post, but you'll be free of the toxicity and back in control. Since you can't change a toxic friend's personality, you'll need to change how you react to them. Don't allow them to make you feel small or bad about yourself. Instead, tell yourself that your friend has the problem and that there's nothing wrong with you. It can be slow progress, but over time, you will gain back power and control. If it's possible, try to reduce the amount of time you spend with your toxic friend. If you're in the same place at the same time, try to form a buffer with other people. On the other hand, if this person constantly puts you down in front of others, just walk away from the group when she approaches, or reply with a non-aggressive, calm response that turns any snide comments back on the giver. We naturally want to gain praise and acceptance from the people People in our lives. But if you have a toxic friend, you can end up feeling much worse about yourself. When you've been hurt in this way, try listing all the things you feel good about yourself for. Write them down and read the list whenever you feel this way. How to feed the positive relationships in your life. Once you've identified which of your friends are radiators, you need to feed those positive relationships so they grow and thrive. Spend time focusing on those good friendships. Try to spend as much time as possible around people that make you feel good about yourself. How can you foster those positive relationships? Here's some expert advice to point you in the right direction. Take time to listen. Listening skills are vital when it comes to boosting your friend's self-esteem and feelings of self-worth. Not only do you need to listen to what your friend has to say, but you also need to work to understand what they are communicating to you so that your interactions can be as effective and successful as possible. Be present. Just because you're physically with someone doesn't mean that you're really there. If you're dwelling on something else instead of really listening to what your friend is telling you, or if your mind is wandering instead of really paying attention to what they have to say, you aren't fostering a positive relationship. The connection you make with your friends is the foundation of that friend's success. So you need to devote enough time, effort, and energy into building up and developing the relationship so that it can grow and thrive. 
Give feedback and take it in return. Be prepared to offer advice, but also be willing to take it from your friend. This is a key part of a strong friendship. Be trusting. It takes courage to trust someone. However, whatever your baggage, it's important to remember that the more you trust in your friend, the more open you are to positivity. For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.